Good day, John Heilman here with your Evidence-Based Minutes. So, have you ever wondered, does teaching grammar really work? So, if you're working on grammar interventions, how effective are they? Uh, when working on grammar interventions, it's the way that I'm doing it the same way that some other people are doing it. And if there are multiple ways of working on grammar, is one way better than the other? Well, let's take a look at some evidence. So this is a really nice study that was done by Liza Feinstack. Uh, she was looking at two different types of uh, therapy on grammatical morphemes. Uh, she was looking at implicit instruction versus explicit instruction. So let's just take a few seconds to distinguish between implicit instruction and explicit instruction. Implicit is more naturalistic. With implicit instruction, the child is more passive. So this is just giving naturalistic exposure to the different types of grammatical targets that we're interested in. Two of the common ways of doing this are through modeling. So let's say, for example, you're working on irregular past, and you might be saying, oh, I see you built that tower. You built it. You did such a nice job. It was built so nicely. Oh, she took the blocks. I see that she took the block. So just providing exposure to those targets such as irregular past. Uh, another way we do this is through recasts, um, also sometimes called expansions or extensions. This is where a child produces a form incorrectly and we give them the feedback. So let's say, for example, we're again focusing on irregular past, the child would say, I braked the blocks or I braked my project. You would say, oh, I see you broke it. It broke. Oh my goodness, it broke. What are we going to do? So um, again, both of these are passive. We're not demanding or requesting that the child produce anything or we're not providing any direct instruction. So that's the implicit instruction. Explicit instruction is where we actually explicitly teach the rules for grammar or our target to the child. So this is really engaging the metacognitive skills of the child, the metalinguistic ability. So for example, it might look like a, you know, a task might look like this where you're working on past 10 CD instead of just providing models or doing those recasts you would explicitly say something like whenever you talk about something you've already done something that's happened in the past you have to add ed or ed to the end of it ed to that action so let's take a look at the study that they did looking at these two types. So they looked at young elementary school kids. So it's important to realize these aren't preschool age kids. These are early elementary, so five to eight year old kids. And these kids all had developmental language disorder. So they were receiving speech and language therapy, addressing their language goals. Uh, they had three different novel grammatical targets that they had. So these weren't actual grammatical morphemes. These were nonsense grammatical morphemes, just to make sure all of the kids were on the same page. And then what they did is these three different targets, they addressed them uh, in five sessions. So the treatment period was relatively quick, is relatively short. Uh, and there were two different groups. So we had the first group of kids where they only received that implicit instruction. And then the second group of kids, they had the explicit instruction. And then when they had the opportunities, they would also do the implicit. So it's the main thing to, to show here is that we have, uh, you know, the, the one group just got implicit. The second group is basically our explicit group. So the first thing they looked at is how do the kids do when that we're looking at their therapy probes, right? So when we're looking at the specific skills, the specific uh, morphemes that they were working on in, in therapy, and with the implicit group, they, there were 12 kids, and of those, only three met that 80% uh, accuracy criteria. So three of the kids, after the five sessions in, in each probe, three of the kids were uh, achieving 80% proficiency. We contrast that with the explicit group. There were 13 kids in that group, and 10 of the 13 kids were able to reach that proficiency level, that 80% proficiency. So as you can just see here on the data, it's a difference. Statistically, it was significant with a pretty good effect as well. And then they looked and said, okay, well, we have the specific therapy probes we worked on. How does this generalize to probes that we didn't work on in therapy? So here we see this is the implicit group. Uh, they had about 8% of the generalization probes correct and the majority of the, the generalization probes incorrect. 
Now with the explicit group, uh, they had close to 70% of their probes were done correctly in the generalization uh, and fewer were incorrect. Again, this group, this difference you can see is, is pretty notable and it was statistically significant as well. So what can we learn from this? What do we take away? Uh, well, one thing just to realize, just as a caveat, is that the study is not perfect but this is pretty consistent with some other studies that have been looking at explicit versus implicit instruction. Uh, it's also important to remember that this was a very tightly controlled experiment. They were you know, uh, looking at these specific probes and that's all they were really working on in the therapy. So just thinking about that as it, generalize, as it generalizes. And then in conclusion, I think it's pretty compelling of evidence that this explicit, explicit instruction does uh, work. It is effective in these early elementary age students and working on these grammatical features. So if you're working, if that's a probe that you work on, if that's a skill that you work on, a goal is, is grammar, uh, grammatical features, uh, it would be wise to consider adding explicit instruction as well. So that's what I have for you today. Now you know. Uh, and for more information about this study, please look in the information below. Have a good day.